Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Moedin, and this is the show where we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket. Let me just move over here. There's some stuff in the background. It's raining a couple of days in, in Cape Town, so we had to take other measures, obviously, to do certain house shows. So, <laughs> welcome to the show, guys. Um, as you know, Calvarena scored a double century today. Ryan Rickleton scored for 143, not out. And we had an old-timer in Fahan Beardin also scoring a century. So, it was quite a hectic day for the batsmen in four-day cricket. But it was also a big day for Cricket Fanatics magazine because we launched a new issue of our magazine today. And it was an excellent edition, I feel, that we needed to talk about. Um, I saw a couple of comments on Facebook after we posted our, our cover story and obviously our cover of our magazine with people saying that we this is just words, we need to do things about it. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to expose certain stories within the community. We are obviously trying to also talk about it. We're trying to let coaches have a voice to speak about the issues that they're having. Because we need to highlight those issues with the rest of the world. And we need to highlight those issues with Cricket South Africa and other people in the country, maybe to certain sponsors. We can't do anything about it yet unless we are making some decent, decent cash to be able to put it back into the community. But that's just my little small rant that I just wanted to say. We launched our new issue of the magazine, which I'll talk about later. But let's first and foremost talk about Calvary Rayner's doubles done that he scored today because it was a massive statement from the guy. We have an interview that I did exclusively with him after the game, which I'll play for you right now. But before I do that and before I get going, don't forget to obviously subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to click that notification bell for all future videos. We need your help, guys. So get involved in the comment section. And we would like you guys to get involved with the Super Chat because every Super Chat that you guys give us, it helps us a little bit towards the future, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how you do it. The instructions are at the bottom of the screen. You have to click the bot dollar sign at the bottom left of, of the screen. Now, if you're on YouTube and you're currently watching this on your mobile device, some mobile devices, the app doesn't work with this. You you need to do it from either desktop or you're going to have to do it from your browser um, if you're going to watch this YouTube video. So you have to obviously put your credentials on YouTube itself, your card, etc., for you to be able to register so that you can obviously give us a super chat and you can choose the price that you want to pay guys and you know how much you want to donate to cricket fanatics magazine with a super chat so please get involved with that but let me first and foremost play you a small part of Carl of Verena's interview with myself and and we talk about he spoke about a little bit about what it takes to be to to score a double time how to get over the the line etc but i'll let him do it for you the full video is on our channel if you want to watch it too so here's what Carl Verena had to say first class cricket I mean it was very pleasing to watch I mean a very very good not very tidy as well not a lot of mistakes that you made in the middle out there um, just take me through it um, yeah I think you obviously didn't watch last night I was uh, <laughs> scored quite a lot of runs off the outside edge um, yeah I don't know it was quite challenging up front to be honest I struggled struggled been struggling with my technique a little bit this week, uh, sort of went into the game not feeling too great. Um, yeah, I felt like last night was a bit challenging to bat as well. Um, but yeah, once I sort of got a score together, I just, just looked to build on it. So yeah, really pleased. Um, yeah, happy to get the run. So you mentioned you weren't really feeling that great for the match, etc. Or going into the into this knock. Um, how do you get over the mental hurdles and then come out here and score a double century? Yeah, I was obviously chatted to the coach. He just said, uh, score 100 when you're not feeling great, it means even more. So just uh, determined to go out and get it. Um, also, yeah, Newlands, good wicket to bat on. If you get a chance to score runs, you want to take it. So I'm yeah, just really pleased with that. When I got it. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the weekend and to, you to set the scene a little bit. Um, how it was acting up today. Um, obviously, you're facing some obviously world class bowlers like Anif Nokia, for example. Um, Plenty Steeman as well yesterday though, but before we pulled up injured. But I mean, what's the wicket like? Uh, it's really nice to bat on. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was prepared uh, quite a few days in advance. It was already ready uh, for play. Um, so we always knew it was going to be a good wicket. But I think yesterday with the uh, rain and a bit of clouds and stuff, it wasn't sort of as flat as we expected. Um, but yeah, it was really good to bat on today. Um, obviously, Glenton pulling up uh, made things a bit easier for us. Uh, Anna, Marku, they probably had to go within themselves a little bit, so um, it did make it a bit easier for us, but um, 
yeah, still obviously really good bowlers and they didn't make it easy. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a good wicket. Because we know in your career so far, a lot of 50s and you were struggling to convert. Then you come out here and you perform the way you have. So, I mean, can you give some tips out there to, to, your, to other batsmen or youngsters out there to how to get over that mark finally to push? I think it's just, um, just not being satisfied. I think early on in my career, you get to 50 and you're like, okay, you sort of... Uh, have a sigh of relief, you've got runs, you've contributed, but I think the last probably two years I sort of realised that it's nice to get a 50, um, but you never know when a stretch of bad form is, is around the corner, so 50 is not really going to get you, not going to really help your numbers too much, you need to get hundreds, get big hundreds, so no, I think I've just put an emphasis on, on not being not being happy and not being satisfied with 50 and just trying to So that's what Carl had to say in his interview with us. Um, very interesting over there. You can go watch the rest of the interview on Cricket Fanatics Mag's channel at, at the bottom of here. It's one of the latest videos that we uploaded. So go ahead and check that out. Um, I really enjoyed talking to him and getting to know what his thought processes was. So I'm going to talk about Carl because I think that this knock is a massive statement, uh, not only for himself in his career, but for the Proteas as well. I mean, if Mark Boucher and Graham Smith and Victor Pinsang don't, or Mark Boucher particularly doesn't decide to pick him in the side now to replace someone like Faf Duplessis in that lineup, as I can see, Werner has put up his team on the on the screen over here, and particularly in that position, that number five position that is now vacant. Now, get an opportunity. I mean, he's knocked down the door completely. I mean, I did an interview with George as well, which I'll probably put up tomorrow, guys. Um, he scored essentially today as well, and he spoke about that. He spoke about but but Kyle and that Kyle deserves a place and I know it's his friend and his teammate but I mean he really does deserve a spot in this particular lineup the way he's been performing consistently and I think that it is about time that we give guys or we we give guys the recognition after they've done it for a long time so obviously Kyle has been doing it consistently for the last three years now from newcomer of the season of the newcomer of the year in 2016-17 I think it was to going having a great season for the for the for the Cobras and then again another season this year I mean he's looking like he should be if I was going to nominate the Cobras player of the year it would be Kyle Verena this year I mean I think this particular knock really puts him ahead of maybe someone like George Linder, who was also performing quite well this season. So it's quite interesting. I think it was really nice to see Calvary in action, to watch how tidy his knock was, and to come into the situation when the Cobras were a little bit wobbly, and once again pulling them out of trouble, and along with George Linder. So it was really good to see Kyle in action, to watch him live. That was something that I was really blessed to see. Yes, he had a couple of edges last night, and that's why I asked him the question, because I feel today was almost like a different innings for him. It was like two separate innings, you could basically say. Um, that's how he performed. It was Last night, he was really edging it. He was really struggling. Like I said before the match, he was struggling with his technique a bit. For him to get over those hurdles, those are the mental things that I'm talking about that I really, that's why I fanboy over Kyle so much, because when things are tough for him, and when he's, his back is against the wall, and he's struggling, pulls out performances like this it's ridiculous on on over and over and over again he does it it's it's, it's a consistent thing from Carl. it's not like he does it once in a blue moon consistently when the team is in trouble pulls them out of trouble when he's having a rough patch and he's struggling a little bit and feeling uncomfortable he pulls out a performance like this a first 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 class double ton for calvareno um, I mean, it was an excellent performance. Really, it was. And I think it's about time that he sees the South African team. And I see that you guys are agreeing with me um, in this particular um, in this particular um, live chat that you guys also think that he should get an opportunity. You know, with Pavuma now vice-captain, I feel that he needs to be given more responsibility in the test arena and maybe moved up to number four. Um, we'll have to see who bats at number three. It can either be Rassi or a new guy like Keegan Peterson or... Um, Rassi or oh, um, Reina van Tonda. Um, that's all options over there available. But I think that Rassi also is 32 years old. I mean, I think we, I would, what I would do with Rassi is now tell him to focus on us winning the T20 World Cup and the 2023 World Cup. I think that should be his prime focus for him to be able to do that. Um, I think Ryan Rickleton was excellent today as well. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see him bat. What I've heard from guys that did see him bat that 
it was an excellent knock. I need the guys that were there. Maybe employ if you were at the game, you can give us some insight into that in the comment section about that. Uh, because I mean, Ryan coming back into the four day setup again, playing excellently. Um, Rassi definitely for me um, has been an excellent player in domestic cricket, and I think he is someone that is that is experienced. Um, if we're looking to to build towards the next Test Championship, is a nice filler to have right there. But I think now we need to invest into our younger players. Um, we've got the likes of Dean Algo as our captain right now. He's an experienced guy at the top of the order. Got Aiden Markram, who is like in the middle age now of get, getting into the more into more experience, getting more experience at the test level at right now, really getting into his groove. Then you've got a guy, I feel like you need a newer guy, maybe at three, or we can have Rassi at three. Um then we can at four, you can have Temple Bavuma, five, you can have Calvarena, or you can bring a new guy in at five, like Keegan Peterson or or, or someone like um uh Reynard van Tonda. I don't doubt Dex, I don't doubt um Rassi van der Dissen. I believe that he's an excellent player. And I really like Rassi. I like him as a human being. I love him, I like him as a player. I think he's an excellent um cricketer. But I feel that he's more important and more valuable to us right now in the in the in the in white ball cricket. Um, I see Bevan, you're asking me about the update on construction at Newlands. The, the the talk at the moment is that they're doing certain sections at a time, so they're not doing everything actually at once. So they'll do. I think they're doing one. I can't remember exactly in what order it's going to be, but the first section will, is supposed to be completed in April, which gives them only a month. And it doesn't really look like maybe they are close to completing it. Um, I don't know because it's going to all be speculation. Even the guys at Newlands themselves, if I'm going to go speak to them, they're not going to be able to give me a definitive answer immediately. So by the look of it, I feel by the end of the year, they'll probably get majority of it done. Most of the construction, I feel, will be done by the end of the year. Hopefully, if we're really pushing it and they really work quickly, quick, fast, quick, fast. So that's what we would like to see. Um, so, guys, yeah, I really need to talk about that. And I thought that that particular, obviously, I'm going to talk about this particular innings. Um, it was a very impressive knock. I mean, to see this knock live was incredible. And the reason I'm picking it is because I got to see it live. It's not necessarily only because I'm a fan, a fan of Calvarino, which you guys do know that I do respect him as a player. Um, but I respect Ryan Rickleton too. I respect Van Beardin too. I mean, Michal Pretorius did excellently with a 3 for 50. Budaza did uh, excellent with a 4 for 50 yesterday. Um, Brand scored 107 yesterday. We had, we had um, Ethan Posh scored 100 yesterday. Maharaj taking a 5 for today. I mean, there's been plenty of awesome, awesome performances. I mean, George Linder, let's not forget about that guy. He's, I mean, he's he's now scoring 100 for fun. I'm um, after he got his first word over the line. He just keeps on, keeps on doing it over and over again. So excellent performances on that side. I think that from the batting perspective, Perspective around the country, there's been some excellent performances. So let's move on. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the launch today. So we launched our new issue of the magazine. Very important topic I feel that we need to have. And at Cricket Fanatics magazine, we want to try to tell the stories, the untold stories in South African cricket. I don't want to just be writing or be putting together or compiling glamour magazines. That's all about the glamour players and all about the, the massive massive headline stories i also want to give exposure to things that i think needs to be spoke, spoken about last last month we were the first people i think possibly in the country or i don't know in the world i haven't seen anything yet but i think we're one of the first digital magazines in the world to actually put on a female on the a woman on the front cover of a magazine and make entire woman edition just on women's cricket um we did that last month because we really want to help promote the game we don't have the money and the budget to be able to put money into the game. So we need to do it in the best way we possibly can. And that's by giving the game exposure, giving those stories exposure and speaking about the difficult issues in South African cricket. So this month, what we decided to do is talk about the pipeline, talk about youth cricket. How is youth cricket currently in South Africa? You can see that the cover in the middle of here. Those are kind of previous editions that we have, so please subscribe to the magazine and go check it out. But we spoke about youth cricket in South Africa. As you can see, the headline on this particular screen is taking cricket to forgotten areas. 
because we spoke about forgotten areas and, and Luba Bala did an excellent, excellent job. Excellent job in this particular magazine. Luba Bala, I know you don't want me to say this or you don't want me to speak about this or, or let people tell people this, but I know he felt a little bit maybe you wanted me to, you wanted me to, you gave me two articles and, uh, and I had to choose which one. I backed this one 100% because I thought that the topic that he was speaking about and the way he explained it from his perspective was excellent. So I put it on the, as, the, as the cover story, this issue. And it speaks about putting cricket into the areas that we've, we've forgotten about. There's so, many, there's so many situations. We've got rural areas, location areas, and we've got suburbs. And the suburbs and are dominating cricket at the moment. Um, that's what's happening in South Africa at the moment. So... They, we want to talk about transformation, but it starts over here. It starts at grassroots level. It's so important that we we give um, the youth the support. We give the youth the structure. We give the youth um, as much as we can. We can give them opportunities to be able to um, show what they are capable of and give them opportunities. And I thought that we needed to highlight this. So we spoke about that. We, we spoke about what CSA is doing from a youth perspective in South Africa. We spoke to Niels Mom Momsberg. Um, we spoke to Neil Momberg. I'm um, sorry. Um, he he spoke about various structures in South Africa, what CSA is doing with regards to tap camps, etc., and the hubs and all of those type of things and what we are doing at the younger level, um, at, the, at the lower levels in, in, in the pipeline. Um, we had a chat, we, we did an interview with Shukri Conrad as well, talking about the SN19 team. We did an exclusive on the Cubs Week to see what the Cubs Week level is doing as well. Obviously, the uh, exclusive on the Lions, who for a large portion of time have dominated but didn't do so well this season. But then we had Western Province, who hasn't really dominated for a long time and now winning the Cubs Week. We spoke to Mr. Graham October, who gave some excellent insight into their thought process and how they deal with the youth and how they created a winning culture at Western Province in the Cobras. So it was an excellent, I think it's an excellent addition for you guys to get some insight. We spoke to Sean Belugi as well, who has been so in, influential with regards to promoting Kaya Majola Week and KFC Mini Cricket and all the pipelines and going to the townships and getting cricket, giving guys um, kit giveaways and so many things, um, KFC vouchers. There's so many things he's done for cricket in South Africa. We spoke to him too. Um, and he was very humble in his answers and gave an excellent Q&A that was done by the twins, Janine and um, Jessica October, which you saw on our obviously Offside Maiden show. You you know their favorites on there. So um, they wrote an amazing article. Emily also spoke to um, Sia Sibia from Gauteng and she gave an excellent insight over there. We had Lucy um, Reese from the Offside Maiden show too, from all the way from England, talking about the All Star program and how South Africa can do things similarly and and, and learn from those experiences. So, so there's so many things that were spoken about in this issue. So please go ahead and download the magazine. I mean, come on, guys, it's free. What is it going to do um, but educate you and teach you about certain things in South Africa and what some some kids go through in this country? It's it's really heartbreaking to hear those stories. But guys, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. We obviously spoke about Calvarena today, obviously scoring that double century, and surely Boucher and Graham Smith should put him in the squad right now, in, into the team right now. I mean, maybe it's a chance to give a guy like him an opportunity who showed his, his ability this season, last season, and the season before, ever since he made his first-class debut um, for the Cobras. He's been excellent. So I don't understand... Um, why are we not going to see an opportunity for him around the corner? I'm sure there's an opportunity around the corner for Calvarena. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Click that notification bell for all future videos. Go to clickfanaticsmag.com for all your updates. We have a wrap of the daily of daily wrap from a buy of the domestic cricket. We've got a restructure which we didn't speak about on today's show because I really want to get on Paul and the other guys on the show to, to really delve into the, the restructure and talk about the, the teams in the Division 1, Division 2 and how we feel about those type of things and how we feel about those teams that are have been pushed up to Division 1, the two extra teams. Um, so we're going to have to maybe chat sometime in the week about that in depth once we obviously get some more news um, about it, etc. And we're probably going to hear movements around from a lot of clubs, of course, because the franchise is dropping. So you might 
not see your favorite players in your favorite provinces anymore or your favorite teams in, in your favorite city teams anymore um, because it's all going to be split up. The Cobra is obviously going to be split up into southwestern districts, Poland and Co and and Western Province. So you might see a lot of movement from the Cobras going to other provinces. Um, we, we never know. It's, it's fifteen teams, so there's so much so much to talk about over the next week. So we'll probably be doing that on a regular basis. Um, please support us in the Patreon so we can be by becoming a patron today. The link is on the screen and in the description as well. It really helps us set up and create better content for you guys. So if you guys want us to pr continuously produce the content we're producing on a daily basis, and you want us to continuously bring you exclusive content, like we have been doing, we need your help too. So join the community, become a patron today. There are different tiers for you to choose. So you can become a patron and just give a little bit towards us to help us create a better platform for you guys to express your views and to learn new things about cricket because we're all learning on this journey together i'm still learning i don't know everything so you guys teach me a lot in the comment section and i love it and i want to grow our relationship i want you guys to come on this journey with me so please um you can do that with us by doing that if you guys know anybody that has a small business and you're looking to make sales online and you're looking to get more leads even if your business is offline it does not matter you can contact us at cricketfanaticsmag at gmail.com and we'll book a call with you to help you out or help wherever your friends or your family out if they have a small business or a business and they um, need our help, just put them in touch with us. So go ahead. There's a link in the screen also as well, a free tutorial to help you there too. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another daily show. Take care, everyone.